Hello, welcome to a video about the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, I'm coming from this as a perspective as a teacher in the UK um, who will quite often get asked by students and uh, parents, should they be buying a Raspberry Pi? Um, I think the answer is dependent really on what they want out of it. Um, so the first question I'll ask is, do you need to use it as a desktop replacement? And if the answer to this is yes, then more often than not, my answer would be no, a Raspberry Pi would not be suitable for you. Uh, the Raspberry Pi itself, I think, is a fantastic device. It's been really, it's revolutionized uh, the teaching of computer science, and uh, I think it's met the aims from the foundation's perspective here of empowering young people to use computing technologies to shape the world. Done a great job for that, for programming, understanding how computers work, let students experiment or experiment with different operating systems, software, do physical computing. There's so many different projects that you can sort of uh, use a Pi for. So in that term, in those terms, a great device and very, very successful. But in terms of being a desktop replacement, not so good. Okay, but it wasn't really, I don't think that was the initial aims anyway. Uh, but back in 2012, when they first came out, the Pi, uh, it, us using it as a desktop computer was kind of like going back to the ages of uh, dial-up networking and things. It really wasn't capable. And I would say that that was the same as the for the Pi 2 and the Pi 3. And it wasn't really until we got to the Pi 4 where things were sort of getting to the point where it was kind of usable as a desktop computer. The, the processing power was obviously uh, a lot more, uh, it was a lot higher. Uh, memory was uh, also higher, four and eight gigabytes now available. Networking was better. The tools and just the sort of general setup of the Pi was also uh, a lot easier to use. But I would still say at that point, for prolonged desktop use, not not really, just not quite there still. So what about the Pi 5? Well, let's have a little think about what's changed. Um, the processing power has doubled from the four. It's got a new chip that means a lot of the sort of the networking and storage and things like that are working a lot better. PCI key, PCI, PCIe connector uh, should allow us to uh, connect NVMe drives for get faster storage still. Uh, improved GPU performance for graphics and just little touches like a power button and uh, real-time clock sort of uh, capabilities there would suggest that now the Pi 5 could be a desktop replacement. Okay, let's have a little kind of look at uh, some demonstrations here of what we could maybe do with a Pi 5. Here's my Pi 5 sitting on my desk here. In terms of uh, what the Pi 5 looks like, it's not really changed from the previous models in terms of its general form factor and things. Um, you would probably want to get the um, recommended power supply that comes for the Pi 5 because it does draw a lot more power. Um, what I've been doing today though is I've been experimenting with sort of the performance of uh, storage speeds with an SD card um, and a SATA uh, SSD drive there uh, connected over USB uh, and then also looking at uh, a PCIe NVMe based solution so connected at the moment is a SSD uh, in there and definitely seen big improvements in the performance of the storage from sort of uh, from 20 megabytes per second now all the way up to sort of 400 megabytes per second which is uh, good enough I think for sort of uh, launching applications fast enough and making them uh, responsive enough for, for general kind of use. Uh, what about sort of software and things there because that's obviously uh, a huge part as well as the hardware. Got a lot easier with the Pi as time's gone on sort of installing uh, new software and things a lot easier. We can browse the web sort of uh, very well with it. Um, let's have a take a little look at some of those things. So if you haven't worked it out, we're actually watching a presentation that is currently being uh, edited uh, on a Pi. Um, and that's what we've just been using. I'm using uh, Office 365 here to create this presentation. Um, browsing the web, really good. Uh, sort of as you go around different sites, kind of, uh, fast, responsive, images load quickly. Uh, the networking kind of speed for this Pi uh, is really impressive for me. I've got a good internet connection here um, and the Pi is able to make the most of it. Uh, I've got a 500 megabits per second connection uh, and the Pi is, got a, is keeping up with my sort of desktop in terms of uh, raw sort of uh, connection speeds, which as I say, results in, if you've got a good connection, uh, a good experience when browsing the web. Um, 
in terms of other aspects, so obviously students would probably want to do things like watching YouTube videos. I think these working really well. Uh, the good up to sort of 1080p 30. Uh, in my experience, if you try and push it to 60, um, the, the, the Pi then starts to sort of struggle a little bit. Uh, I think that with sort of software updates that that might um, be resolved in the future at some point. Let's just sort of have a little look. And as you can see, all sort of working as you'd expect. Uh, very few drop frames. If we look at stats for nerds, as you can see up here, sort of 40, sort of 1. The dropped frames, you can see, there's none sort of happening now. They tend to be um, sort of when you're changing, you're starting and stopping videos, etc. But overall, a really good experience uh, for browsing the web. Um, what other, what else can we look at here? So yeah, as I mentioned, Office 365 working really well. Um, other applications that you would sort of uh, have perhaps on your Raspberry Pi are sort of sort of image editing packages like I've got Inkscape here for doing vector work and we've got GIMP installed uh, for doing sort of photo editing and things uh, and all working really nice and quickly as you see starts up quickly there and sort of opens up files uh, images nice and quickly you're able to go in and sort of make adjustments to images uh, and it's keeping up really quite nicely uh, there as a sort of desktop style replacement. Overall, um, how are we doing in terms of sort of memory and things like that? This is an 8 gig Pi, but as you can see, even with all of these different applications open and all of these tabs that I've got open here, I've got sort of Teams and I've got sort of a, a video that I was watching earlier and I've got some editing that I've been doing for some work with students and things all sort of going on here. With all of these all open, we are still only running at sort of three and a half gigabytes. So you could probably get away with the four uh, gigabyte version of the Pi, uh, but as I say, this is the 8 gig version. Um, and I hope you can see, um, looking at this, it's working really quite well as a, as a desktop replacement for me. So, in the end, what does that mean? Well, would I recommend the Pi as a desktop replacement? And I think the answer is still a little bit yes, but depends on really what you're after. It's certainly not going to be a uh, a games machine for running sort of modern games or anything like that. Um, still a little bit tricky to use, but if you wanted a combination of all of the educational benefits and still get a desktop replacement, uh, I think my answer would be, yeah, the Pi 5 works as a desktop replacement. Thank you for watching.